I've got an exciting week planned. Oh, yeah? I'm digging a hole. Okay. See, like metaphorically or? No, no, literally. Literally digging a literal hole. See, um, my father been at this house for 40 years. And, and back when my father got everything put together, he set up the mailbox. Uh-huh. Only either he did not care or he didn't know. I'm tending to lead toward didn't care. Um, that mailboxes, there is a requirement that they have to be a certain distance from the street. Uh, it, the curb has to be six inches from the opening of your mailbox door, and it has to be a certain huh. height and whatnot. Um, and every other mailbox on the street is all properly arranged, except ours, which is a foot and a half away from the street. Oh, you got away with that for a long time, huh? <clears throat> yeah, so there is a divot in the ground in front of the mailbox from where the, the mail truck has to divert off the road and kathunk, or, or, and then back onto the road to deliver our mail. And surprisingly, they have put up with this for 40 years. Wow. Well, I mean, he was old. But... But that's part of the problem is the mailbox is in the wrong place. And the other part of the problem is the post has rotted through. So I'm having to prop my mailbox up with a cinder block. Yes, I am that house on the block. Yeah, that's, so, that's some redneck shit, man. We are, no, we were fixing this. I have got a aluminum pole to put in its place. The fucker's not going to rot again. And we have <laughs> cement... And we are digging a fucking hole and we are putting up a new, not old, grungy ass fucking mailbox and we're throwing the other one to fuck away. That's the excitement in my life. Thanks, Dad. We got a we got a squirrel feeder so that the squirrels will stop eating all my bird food. Cause we feed you know what suet cakes are? No. <coughs> They're bird seed pressed into blocks of solidified beef fat. Yeah, I know. But that way you get a certain kind of feeder and it goes in kind of like a video game cartridge. Like you just put the cake in. <coughs> and the do, you have to, do you have to blow on it first before you put it in there? You do not, but it helps keep them in the freezer because otherwise they melt and it gets really disgusting. And, and the birds fly with that really cool MIDI music. <laughs> If you're really lucky, Neon Cat will fly through your yard. <laughs> but the squirrels figured out not only how to get to the feeder, but how to get the whole suet cake out. And we've seen them more than once eating that fucker like a sandwich. <laughs> and now we have like morbidly obese squirrels because they're eating whole cakes of beef fat and the, the birds have no food. Well, but I, you know, I, I'm a Disney princess. I don't want to fight with the squirrels. So we just got these squirrel feeder things that you s screw into the tree. So now they have their own food and maybe would, they won't be diabetic. I would think the more the cats would be in favor of the morbidly obese squirrels. Well, they don't go outside. So they don't care. They just, this is just their TV. They sit in the window and watch all the nature happen. Uh, well, with that having been said, it's time for every goddamn horrible thing. It is a. It's been a week, as always. It never run out of stories. That is the thing. And we never will. It is. It's a. I'm not gonna let Dan blow up or shoot the squirrels. You sick fucks. Yes. Where do these people get the idea? I hate animals. <laughs> he likes animals. He doesn't like people. If there were people stealing the bird food, we'd be burying bodies. <laughs> we would also be digging a hole. Yeah. But it's squirrels, so we're gonna feed them. I like animals more than squirrel. More anyway. Than... Each week, Catherine, a Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And Tara, our very first story this week was sent to us with you in mind. Oh, boy. And it's one of those moments where we don't get the beginning and we don't get the end, but we get the middle, and we're left 
with many questions. Many, 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 many questions. Oh, apparently the point of the suet with the pepper in it is because squirrels don't like it. Oh. Seven hundred thousand dollars <gasps> in feces laced cosmetics no. seized in bust. Oh my god. I recognize those palettes. Okay, well those are all fake, by the way. Every single one of those naked palettes is fake, and <laughs> incidentally, there's no such fucking thing as the naked four. So yeah, all this shit is fake. Los Angeles authorities found $700,000 worth of counterfeit cosmetics laced with bacteria and human waste during a bust at the Los Angeles Fashion District on Thursday. According to officials, the major task force hit 21 locations. Photos tweeted by LAPD show the makeup stand selling popular brands such as Kylie and Urban Decay. Kylie's shit is overpriced anyway. <clears throat> Captain Rena tweeted, the best price is always not the best deal. Okay, but that's all we get. That's all there is to the story. Yeah, like, so, oh, I mean, I guess if they were just using a really not sanitary lab, E. coli can get in anything. And that's technically fecal bacteria. How do you get your poop in the makeup? I mean, if people aren't washing their hands after they use the bathroom and then they're pressing pallets. That's like, if you just don't have a clean facility, that'll happen. That's three quarters of a million dollars in poop. Yeah. How did, how did this happen? Why, where did we jump in? You know, I have heard about there being all sorts of different kinds of contamination and things. And normally those sort of go from an A to B to C. This is coming from a five to B to X. <laughs> this is algebra, okay? I'm offended that they're pushing something called the naked four, because that's not a fucking thing. I don't even know what that is. And if you're, uh, Urban Decay makes these eyeshadow palettes. The first one, when I was working at Sephora, they released the naked palette, which was my fucking nightmare. Because first of all, it was 14 shades of brown. Ooh. Everybody wanted it. Everybody had to fucking have it. And they would send us like three at a time. And 60 chicks would fight over it. And this went on for months. And then their distributor got fucked up. So they had to go to a whole new distributor. And it was a fucking nightmare for an eye palette that's literally 14 shades brown. Then they put out the Naked 2, which is 14 cool shades of brown instead of warm shades of brown. Then they put out the Naked 3, which I actually have, because that's like 14 shades of rose gold, and that's my jam. <laughs> but that's it with the numbers, because then they have the Naked Smoky. Now they have the Naked Heat. There's no Naked 4. And if you know, like, if, you're, if you know enough about makeup that you want a Naked palette, you know there's not a Naked 4. So I, I don't know who's I don't, falling for that. I don't know enough about... I am just... I... I'm st I I I love that you are hung up on the fact. Well, that one's fake, and I'm hung up on the fact that there's poop in them. Poop, Tara. See, the other thing I learned working at Sephora is makeup contamination. Man, like, don't use the testers on your face unless you clean it with alcohol. We used to watch chicks just pick up an eyeliner and do this, and we're like, well, enjoy your pink eye. But there's poop. We would happily have sharpened that and sanitized it for you, but you want your free hepatitis. How did the poop get in there? That's a I'm lot of poop. You, somebody working there uses the bathroom, doesn't wash their hands, presses the pallets if they're not wearing gloves, I, if it's just not a clean facility. I can't believe one person poops that much that they contaminated 700,000. They don't have 000. to. They just, everybody has to touch the toilet or touch the sink. Or whatever, like that's a lot of poop. Yeah, wash your damn hands. Especially, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna be doing counterfeit shit, that's at least I mean, wash the shit your... wasn't counterfeit. The shit was real. Makeup's counterfeit. Okay, well that's true. Yeah, that was some, the, the, the counterfeit makeup, but actual shit involved. Yeah. I don't. Mike says I like that Tara can tell the makeup is fake just by looking at it. That's what I do. <laughs> I was a professional girly ass bitch for five years. 
Well, now it's for something completely different. Um, here's a five-story blue penis. Yes. A five-story high depiction of an erect blue penis on a Stockholm apartment building is to be painted over just a week after its unveiling. And it's like veiny. Following a storm of complaints from neighbors. The company that owns the block, Atrium Lundberg, uh, said it had seen the work by the artist for the first time on Wednesday morning. Um, Culture and art import are important in developing interesting urban environments, uh, Camilla Klimt, the company's marketing manager, told the paper. Of course, we care about artistic freedom, but at the same time, we must respect neighbors' opinions. That's ironic, coming from someone with the last name Klimt, because Gustav Klimt was a fan of painting naked ladies. The Klimt, art history for you guys there. Klimt said the work would stay up for a short while. Really? It only stays up for a short while, huh? Um, I know, happens to a lot of guys. So everyone interested could experience it. I so the, the guy who wrote this is kind of fucking us fucking around here. Although some people had welcomed the penis as an important part of the debate about sexuality, body, and gender, others, especially neighbors, had quote received it less well and perceived it as an offense. Um, I mean, it's the ultimate unsolicited dick pic. Seriously. Also, why blue? Why is the penis blue? Because they saw the Janelle Monet video and... Because Dr. Manhattan? I said, that's the first thing I fucking thought. He's returned, ladies and gentlemen. Because if they had a little more room, they would have had the big blue balls. Well, if I mean, you, it's I, awfully okay. veiny. All right. like, is it's it, awfully veiny. Is it just me? Let's look really closely at the picture there. Do you see that that tree with no brand, no leaves on it down there at the bottom? <laughs> What's that and look the like? The there yeah. you go. That's because that's what I was thinking when I I'm like, did they paint on me? Oh no, that's just unfortunate. That's what happened there. Um, I don't understand the point of this one. I really don't. I don't really know how that starts a conversation on sexuality. No, because like, it's... the world is literally filled with phallic representation. Yes. You want to start a conversation about some shit? You put up Janelle Monet's pants five stories high. Well, I mean, you put up a five story high Georgia O'Keeffe fucking labia masterpiece. All, all I can think about when I see this is not it's a penis, or not, that it's veiny. I'm just sitting here going, why blue, though? See, I'm really struck by how veiny it is, because <laughs> that looks unhealthy. <laughs> like, That's... I'm not an expert on dicks, but I've seen a few. That's somebody who left a cock ring on way too long. Yeah, like, you took five Viagra when one would have done the job, <laughs> and now you need to see a doctor. I just... But why, why the, <coughs> this is like, is this like a Smurf hard on? I, <coughs> did you stick your dick in a raspberry? I see what's, what's maybe, going, maybe the cock ring is still on. Yeah. And it's veiny and turned blue. Because <coughs> that's, and I'm it's just going to fall off. I'm sorry. That's the only conversation I'm going to start with anybody about this. Not about phallic imagery not about uh the you know perceived uh uh the the way that i think i saw somewhere that they thought it they they the thinking was that the whole mural was blue and yellow because those are the colors in the swedish flag patriotic <laughs> oh apparently the painting is titled fuck the world all I'm going to be saying when I see that picture is I'm just going to look at the next person. But why blue, though? See, but if you wanted to call the painting Fuck the World, then there should be little green landmasses in there. 
I just someone spent hours. You could have at least hours. made the head. You could have made the tip like a globe, like the world. Someone spent hours and hours painstakingly painting a giant blue cock. I like that everybody is like horrified that this is there. This didn't happen overnight. Five story, extremely detailed renders of dicks don't happen overnight. You'd be surprised. You get a crew be. together. Because I feel like that would take some time and be noticed. You set up a, a laser projector. You get a crew together. You do some paint by number shit. Boom, you got yourself a five story dick in less than 12 hours. You sound they, like you're speaking from experience. They can do it for you. We can set it up. I can get you a toe today. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can get you a five story blue dick tomorrow. <laughs> Why is why 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 blue? Uh, all right, let's go back to 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 something less confusing and yet very very confusing at the same time. It's Florida, of course. Um, we for for those of you who are not in the United States, each individual state has its own alcohol rules. In fact, each individual county in a state has its own alcohol rules. Some of them um, are dry counties. They don't sell alcohol at all, which it's exceedingly rare these days, but they exist. Some of them have these weird rules like you can't sell certain kinds of alcohol in like the Walmart like, and whatnot. On a Tuesday under a full moon. On a, Sunday is the, is the particular one. Where yeah, usually not. like in Connecticut, you can't sell any alcohol on Sunday or any other night after 9 p.m. Um, Here in New Jersey, the thing is, like, restaurants, liquor license, licenses are really hard to get. So a lot of restaurants are BYOB, where you bring your own bottle of wine and they'll pour it for you. But they can't sell it to you. Yeah. So in, in this case, um, it's Florida. And they had you, they could not sell alcohol between certain hours, between the hours of 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. So this happened. and That's like peak hours for drunks, though, man. What would happen if I stole some beer, man asked, before finding out it means going to jail. I mean, yeah. Sebastian, Florida. Florida man asked the store clerk, what would happen if I stole some beer? Police say Christopher Maxwell soon found out. Police told uh, TCPalm.com the 33-year-old Maxwell entered a convenience store at 2.30 a.m. Friday but was told he couldn't buy beer because alcohol sales are banned in the city between 1 and 7 a.m. In response to Maxwell question, Maxwell's question, the clerk replied she would call 911. Maxwell still grabbed two 18-packs of Bud Light <laughs> and left. Really? You're going to go to jail for some fucking Bud Light? Police found Maxwell nearby with an 18-pack in each hand. Officers say he struggled when they tried to arrest him. He remained jailed Sunday on charges of petty theft and battery on a police officer. <laughs> Did you think she was kidding? At least grab some good shit. You're Just going to jail and you know it. Bud Light. You were even told. Okay, if I steal this, what happens? You go to jail. You're going to jail. I mean, at that point, I'd be like, where's the good shit? Right, you're not paying for it. <laughs> Get the blue moon. And that's the I drink blue moon. Let me be honest. The blue moon's not even the good shit. It's not that good. It's, I like it because they put an orange in it, and I like oranges. The blue moon is better than than Bud Light. It's better. To be than honest, Bud I don't know what a good American beer is. What's a good American beer? You're a drunk. You should know. <laughs> I will, by way of illustration, I will show you his bourbon. In a glass that reads, God of Tits and Whiskey. <laughs> Till death do you part, Dan. Till death do you part. I know what I knew who I married. This poor <laughs> man, he does. He knew you you knew who you married. I knew I married an old drunk. <laughs> but he's got really good life insurance. <laughs> I love you. Do you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Now this this is oh, this one's infuriating. This is fucking infuriating. We are in America having a really really stupid conversation about guns in our schools and guns in our society and guns and guns and guns and guns. And guns. Lots of people are offering The only thing that can stop a gun gun with a gun is a gun gun with a gun. Lots of people across the spectrum are offering solutions to this. Some of them are ones I don't agree with. Some of them are ones I do agree with. That is irrelevant to this story because some solutions are just so mind-blowingly obviously stupid. You cannot believe they came out of someone's skull. And yet, and goddamn yet, Pennsylvania school district arms teachers with small baseball bats as last resort. What? Pennsylvania school district district's decision to arm teachers with tiny wooden baseball bats in the event oh, of an active toy. shooter. That's a toy. Is not a hit with parents. No, I can't imagine why. The Mill Creek Township School District outside of Erie gained attention this week for handing out the 16-inch bats to about 500 teachers as part of a training that included how to react during a school shooting. Um, Superintendent William Hall on Tuesday said the sticks were largely symbolic, a, quote, last resort for teachers who want to fight back. How how you gonna fight back against a dude with an AR-15 when you got a toy? It's it's they bought five hundred of these, Tara. Oh, so you can have two. They bought five hundred tiny baseball bats uh -huh. and handed them to their teachers. They said, "Protect our kids from guns with a tiny baseball bat." I'm kind of thinking if tiny baseball bats would have solved this problem, we would know about it. Yeah, we would have solved this problem by now. We we this we would have taken care of it if all we needed was tiny baseball bats. Like those are the ones you buy your kid when you take them to a ball game as a souvenir cuz it's a toy. I mean, yes, if it's wood, it will hurt if it hits you in the head. But not as much as a bullet will. And yeah, um, also bullets are faster than tiny mm -hmm. wooden bats. I and mean, that's not a ranged weapon. Maybe you could try to chuck it and try to get a lucky shot, but you, that's a natural twenty. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, if you ain't rolling a natural twenty when you chuck the tiny wooden bat, you're gonna lose that one. I don't like care. You would actually have been better off doing nothing. I don't care how high your dex is. You, you you throw a throw that it, you're not you're not doing shit, man. I just I, I look at the look on this teacher's face. He's 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 got he's got the perfect expression. Yeah. He's just like, this is the shit we got to put up with. You would actually this. have been better off doing nothing. How much money is this five hundred wooden bat costs? How many monies is that? Too much. How many how many monies? I mean, I, I, okay, let's just, all of us, for right one second, let's put aside the gun control debate, let's put aside whatever opinions we have about it. $1,800, it says later down in the article. $1,800 was spent on 500 tiny wooden bats to stop an active shooter. I don't care where you fall in the gun control debate. This is something we can all agree on. Someone's a fucking idiot. Yeah. I cuz everyone involved in this is a fucking idiot. Cuz more than one person had to have approved this. Somebody had the idea. They gave it to their boss, who gave it to their boss, who gave it to their boss, who approved it. Somebody cut the check. So this Somebody is placed the order. This is a literal chain of fools. All idiots. Yeah. All just it's idiots all the way down. God damn. I the fuck are we so I, I'm thinking of aliens. I don't know if you've seen aliens, but I'm thinking of aliens. It's like it's like, what are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language? Uh, 
Motherfucker. They didn't. You know what? If they had, if, why couldn't they have just, instead of buying 500 tiny bats, why couldn't they have bought 250 regular bats? Why the tiny bats? It would be less insulting. <clears throat> At least then you could pretend you were the rock in that movie. Uh. Oh, this one. Oh, okay. Our next story. Um, this one is uh, from, uh, I, I, yeah, this is from Belfast. So um, oh. you just got back from there. Um, well, from Ireland. I wasn't in Belfast. but. Okay. Well, I, I, I think you're going to be glad you were in Belfast, because this makes no goddamn sense. What the fuck happened here? Man breaks into police station, takes a poo, and leaves wearing uniform. Okay. A man who broke into a police what station. What is this illustration? I don't even know. I don't know what the illustration is here. I guess this is the closest thing they could come to a man shitting. <laughs> it looks like on his feet. It on looks his like feet, he's doing an air raid drill on top of a pile of lettuce. I don't know. Um, Michael Brennan was filmed relieving himself after leaving after breaking in through a side window at the em empty Garda station in Lifford uh, County, Donegal. Oh, Donegal, Ireland. not Belfast, Donegal, Ireland. Uh, close. Donegal is technically in a different country. Belfast is in Northern Ireland, Donegal is in Republic of Ireland, but Donegal is further north than Belfast. Closed circuit television caught him leaving the station wearing a guard a hat just before officers arrived at work. During the early morning raids, Brennan stole two caps, a pocket diary, handcuffs, a car key, a guard a vest, a torch, and two radios. Police took forensics from Brennan's leftovers and began the hunt to find him. Now, that's that's the first thing. Don't leave a big pile of your DNA at a crime scene. That's like... like did he not flush? No, he, 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 he pooped on the counter, Tara. Oh. Oh. He, he pooped on the counter. He came into the police station and he did his shit on the counter. But it, they didn't even need to do that. You might have thought Brennan would go underground after such a brazen incident, but he was eventually picked up by police. What gave him away? Well, he was caught wearing one of the stolen hats. Police didn't immediately realize Brennan was 21, was behind the criminal damage. Uh, he was jailed for three months for possession of stolen goods, but officers later identified Brennan as the man behind the smelly break-in finally appeared in court where he pled guilty to causing criminal damage. I mean, if you stole the hat, you're going to wear it. I get... Maybe in a different neighborhood. What kind of night out involves, hey, guys. Hey, here's, what you doing? Come here. Here's you what we're doing boss? tonight. Come here. Um, Say hi to the internet. Let's cruise downtown. <laughs> like in your box. Uh, we'll pick up a curry. Um, we may be, uh, maybe go at the pub, watch the game, and then on the way home, we're going to break into a police station and shit on the counter. Who's with There's me? My question, I mean, I guess I should know this since I was just in rural Ireland, but mm. nobody's on duty overnight? <laughs> the first thing I'm thinking of is hot fuzz, you know? Yeah. No one no around here tells me anything. Nobody tells me nothing. But like, no one's there overnight. I, I guess crime is like you know, no, no, I mean, we, we don't do crime after dark here. Most Garda aren't even armed. They have specific Garda that are armed, and they're in separate cars. The cars are marked that yeah. they are armed, but yeah. most of them aren't even armed. No, it's everybody just... go home. Crime's over for the day. Yeah. We talk, we we're fine. Everyone go home. They're very strict about that. Crime between eight and five. Yeah. Then I'm, football. I'm just, I'm just, how do you find yourself shitting on a counter in a police station and thinking this, this is my best life? And then I'm going to steal all their stuff. <laughs> this is my best life. I am, I am, I am actualized. I'm finally making my mama proud. God damn it. 
This is the, you know what? If you haven't done anything else in your life, this is your obituary right here. Um, yeah, you will be, your headline on your obituary will be Garda Station Shitter, <laughs> dead of heart attack. Yep. Oh, computer Ronan. He was his own stool pigeon. <laughs> that's that's on so many levels. Yeah. That's like three-dimensional pun that's right like there. like layered. That is that. It's like a parfait of puns. That is, I, I, I hate it, and yet I am still impressed. So I put you in your box. You had to jump out of your box and have a little hissy just so you could jump back in your box. It had to be your idea. She's looking at me like, yeah, fuck you. I don't do what you tell me. You know? Okay. You're very independent. I know. Finally tonight, let's. Th this makes me. Ha I have to go with something that makes me happy. You sent me this, and it makes me happy. <laughs> yes. This this uh, this shit. This always makes me happy when this happens. Baboons propped up barrel to escape West Side Research Center, San Antonio. Primates used barrels to escape a West Side Research Facility. Animals escaped from the Southwest National Primate Research Center. Um, drivers near West Military captured video you had to see to believe of baboons running loose on city streets. The little Houdinis. Let the monkeys loose. <laughs> the little Houdinis live in a six-acre corral and often play with enrichment barrels. Usually the reward is food, but on Saturday it was a chance to play hooky. In the case of one of the barrels, they put it upright. It was too close to the wall, and one of them launched itself to the top. What happened next was a classic case of monkey see, monkey do. Four got loose, three of them made a run for it, and left the property. Ugh. I mean, to be fair, if I were being experimented on by scientists, I would be pissed too, and I would leave. Yeah. Because, fuck it. I mean, I don't know what kind of, I mean, maybe they're just tracking their heart rate every day. Maybe it's fine, but maybe they're experimenting on them with new drugs and that's got to suck and also baboons they not they are not calm little little monkeys no they are mean they got angry red asses they have the they have those fucking fangs on their asses too so what you the second hunger games movie yes with the fucking angry baboon i don't know if those are baboons but they look like them so what y'all did really at, at your, you scientists, you supposedly very smart people, was you did not measure the size of the barrel relative no. to a baboon's leap. You gave an intelligent animal tools and just expected that they would not figure out how to use them. And they did. Although normally, normally they're supposed to throw the barrels, not jump on them. That's Mario's job. They did it That's backwards. <laughs> I'm just... I'm, I'm, they still had little guys in jumpsuits come chase them. <laughs> I'm just... For a few minutes, these little bastards were like king of the world, and I feel so good for them. I kind of want somebody to, like, dub the video of them walking around with the theme song of Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need to... You don't... You just you have to watch it. They're like children, and you have to watch children because they will do. Children will do the worst possible things. Dude, left unattended, my fucking cats do crazy shit. They have gotten into Dan's liquor cabinet and knocked bottles out. They have. We don't even know how they did that. They, they can open doors. They don't even have thumbs. No. You add thumbs to the equation and fangs. Dottie has a fucking Omerta with a blue Sharpie that we keep on the coffee table. And every time she sees it, she has to knock it off the coffee table. We don't know why. Oh. They, got, they, got, they got plans, man. I guess the first thing we learned this week is good cut, damn, keep an eye on your fucking monkeys. Yeah. My cats are velociraptors. They are team hunters, too. 
Like they'll approach you from, if you have something they want, they'll circle around and approach you from both sides and box you in. We've learned this week that uh, in life, sometimes you will have one event that will define you. So yep. choose it well. Try to not make it involve anything revolving anything involving excrement. Yeah, you you don't want to be the, the shitter in your no. obituary because that you will be if you if if that's you'll be the shitter. Like that dude better hope he cures cancer or something. We've learned that you can get a whole lot of people with a whole lot of responsibility to go all in on a really really stupid fucking idea. Yeah. I don't know how that even happened. That just no did no one stop and say time out. Um, is this the dumbest idea ever you guys? This might be a little dumb. Is this the stupidest idea we've ever had? I'm thinking of Magneto from X-Men like I thought you worked at a school. <laughs> we've learned that if you're going if you are Damned and determined to steal the beer, and you know you're going to jail anyway. Don't crap the Bud Light. Steal the good shit. Steal the good shit, because you might. You're at best gonna like, be able to chug the other one. Thing up. I never understood about my days at Sephora was people would steal the testers, and I'm like, you're already stealing. Go for the gold. Steal the product. Why are you gonna steal the one that's half empty and has everybody's germs in it? We've learned that. In which we've learned there is no naked four palette. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you're buying your girl a gift, there is no naked four. That shit's fake. That's the most important takeaway from that story. Not the fecal no, contamination. Well, it's fake and therefore probably substandard. Just suck it up and go to Sephora, dude. And finally, we've learned people are not fans of five-story blue penises. Who go knows? figure. I know. I can, you think that would have its own section on Pornhub. I can kind of appreciate it, because you know what? You wake up, you get your coffee, you look out the, your, your window, and there's a giant blue dick. That's, See, I don't think that would bother me. That's not the best part of waking up. Well, spoken like a straight man. Sometimes I, maybe a girl wants to wake up to a five-story blue dick. Sarah, straight or gay, a five-story blue dick is nobody's friend. That is nobody's friend. That. What would you name it if it was? 